Greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, Robert Meyer Burnett. And four years ago today, right here on the Burnett Work, we started one of our most popular shows that we've ever done, Eliza Views, Whining About Movies. And you'll remember, it starred the love of my life, Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell, the ace, the arbiter of cinematic excellence, and myself, and we'd talk about a movie as we shared a bottle of wine. We're going to bring the show back, but because the channel's grown so much since then, and there's a lot of people that never saw whining about movies, because let's face it, who goes back and digs into your old YouTube playlists? I mean, I... I do, but most people don't. So I'm going to start reposting our famous episodes, and you can, well, discover them new or watch them for the very first time again. So without further ado, please once again join us for Elizaview's Whining About Movies all the way back to March 8th, 2020, and our first debut episode review of David Cronenberg's 1983 Videodrome. Well, we're live. We are. We're live. You ready? You excited about the show? We're live. Wow. Are you ready? I'm super excited. Tallulah and Gilbert are here. Yes, they are. Well, why don't we? Uh, why don't we just jump into it? Let's see how it's gonna work. Let's see how it's gonna go. All right. Let's do this thing. All right. Should be interesting. Well, greetings, imagination connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your viceroy of verisimilitude, your master of fun and wonder, your duke of dope discourse, your chancellor of cheerfulness. Robert Meyer Burnett with a new show, the first episode of our new show, and of course Tallulah is excited about it. Gilbert and Tallulah are here tonight, they might bark, that's part of the show, but this show right now that you're about to watch is Elizaviews with Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell. Hello Elizabeth, this Hi. is your show. What do you have Hello. to say to the, uh, the folks at home? Hang on now, remember, let me change that camera. There, look right there. What do you have to say about... Whoa, Gilbert. Uh, what are we doing tonight? What is this show about? Yeah, so, okay, Gilbert's eating your trash. Um, yeah, so we're watching movies, and we're drinking wine, and we're talking about the movies. Now, the premise of this show is I am, I've ch I'm showing Elizabeth a movie she's never <laughs> seen before. She doesn't know anything about it. She doesn't know why I'm showing it to her, and I don't tell her anything about it except the title... And then the movie starts. Yeah. And of course, before we begin this discussion, I think it's time we pour our, our wine. And, and tonight, we have a very interesting drop. Uh, we've got a Pinot Noir uh, Bewitched. Would you like to tell anybody anything about this wine? Well, I don't know much about it, but it's from the Russian River Valley. Yes, and, and, and we found this. And it, why did we buy this wine today? It was on sale. So, um, Rob chose this wine because it was a $50 wine that was half off. So we got a $50 bottle of wine for $25. For $25. That's pretty good. Yeah. So I'm going to pour a little bit for you to try, of course. And uh, before you get started, I will let you... I, I, I have let this breathe. It's been breathing already. So why don't you tell the folks at home about <laughs> this bewitched wine? Oh, well, I didn't know we were doing an actual wine tasting. Oh, yeah. Well, you can't just nod. Right. We're on camera. You got to yeah, how is it? It's lovely. It's lovely. So it's... so we should we should proceed. <laughs> yes, we should. Okay, we're going to proceed ladies and gentlemen with this lovely uh Pinot Noir. And um Wow, that's that's quite a pour. Quite a pour. That's what this show's all about. Not quite ripped with Rob. <clears throat> but now I think as is customary in uh Eliza views, we're going to toast to the filmmaker and we're going to toast mm -hmm to his film. It could be a her, could be a him, but in this case, we have picked the sixth feature film from the Canadian master of body horror, his 1983 Videodrome. And here's to Hassan Chavez for calling it Videodrome. Uh, let's, uh, let, first of all, let's clink our glasses to Videodrome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Criterion Blu-ray of Videodrome. Now, yep. mm, quite a drop. Now, first of all, had you ever heard of this movie before? I heard the name. I knew nothing about it. Nothing about it? Nothing. So, we put it on. I didn't tell you anything about it. No. And about 10 minutes into the movie, 
what did you say to me? I was pretty upset. I was like, what are you showing me? I hate this. Turn it off. Uh, and, and what was, do you remember what part? I mean, when you saw the video drum scenes, a naked woman yeah. being flogged. Yeah, the, the, um, the torture scenes I was not down with at all. And I thought, is this going to be another one of those snuff type stories? And I was not down for watching something like that. But you like horror. I do. I love horror. So, uh, but you don't like a certain kind of horror. Was this too extreme well, for you? I didn't even know it was horror at that point. I just thought, oh, is this another like weird, you know. Like what? Like a weird snuff story. And I didn't, I just don't. You got you got really angry. I like got you, really you, mad. She got really I'm angry. Really mad. How mad did you get? Several times I said, "Turn this off," and you kept saying, "No, no, keep watching. It's not what you think. It's not what you think." And I'm like, "How could this not be what I think?" What did you think <laughs> of the when it got to the point where James Woods and Debbie Harry are having sex and he's he's piercing her ears? Yeah. And what did you think of that? He takes the pin and they keep like licks the blood off of the pin. I was like, "Oh, okay, I'm done." <laughs> and she made, she almost made me turn it off and I'm like yeah. that's not that's not what uh Eliza views is about she has to watch <laughs> and I wanted to you know I wanted to start and be a little bit edgy David Cronenberg for those of you who don't know began directing features he began making student films back in the late 60s <clears throat> but he began began his feature directing career in 1975 with the movie Shivers that was released in America as they came from within now now that you know his name I showed you Shivers a long time ago. Yes, you did. When and, we first started dating. And, and, and you know, I recommend showing uh, any woman <laughs> Shivers. When, and what did you think of, of of Shivers when you saw it? I actually really liked Shivers. You did. Yeah, I really did. And and what did you what did you remember about the creatures in Shivers? What you what you call them? Oh, the the pen the peni. The peni. The peni, like going up into the apartment. So <laughs> you you'd seen that, and and so okay, so Cronenberg made. Uh, Video Drum was his sixth feature, and five of those features were horror or body horror films. His third feature, he actually took a foray into car racing, and he made a movie called Fast Company. He made They Came From Within, Rabid, with porn star Marilyn Chambers. Then he made um, Fast Company. Then he made The Brood, which I had also shown you, yes. of course. Uh, the Brood Scanners, that everybody seems to remember. And then, of course, in 1983, Videodrome. And uh, this was the sort of the culmination of his body horror films that began. I, I mean, his films were all about how, in my mind, uh, what uh, Cronenberg pioneered a genre. And uh, what does body horror mean? For those of you who, who don't know, um, with body horror, we as creatures of intellect and creatures of, of, of the spirit of the soul... Our brains are encased in these fleshy cocoons that carry us around, that pump our blood, that 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 keep us alive. But at any moment, these flesh and blood cocoons that our intellect resides in can revolt against us at any time. And that's what Cronenberg's movies repeatedly returned to. And Videodrome, now now how would you describe if somebody asks you what did you what, did, what, what, what what's video drum about Elizabeth yeah I I would like to ask the same question oh you don't Seriously, know like the story kind of doesn't even make sense like why would they want to kill all of humanity what is the point of video drone I don't I still don't get what that is well uh, why and why why would they want to broadcast this and take over everyone and to what to what point? Well, doesn't everybody want power? It's a little ambiguous, I'll, I'll grant you. Yeah. But now, let me ask you this. Of course, Videodrome is about a pirate, basically a, a, a scuzzy cable TV uh, station. He owns his own, well, he runs his station, Civic TV, in, in, out of Toronto. And he's looking for something new and tough, something to entice his viewers. And he thinks that sex and murder is something that his viewers might like and in a certain way don't you think <clears throat> videodrome has come true oh yeah yeah i can see that well i mean how do you feel about when you have reality television and totally it's totally like reality television taking over your mind um yeah now when the when the film began you didn't like the torture what did you think of the snm relationship what did you think of 
uh, Debbie Harry's character, Debbie Harry from Blondie. She likes to be cut. She likes to be burned with cigarettes. She is truly into S and M. And when she watches the video drone broadcast, she says that she's made for that show. Yeah. So Lily, you have to stop. Uh, the dogs are playing. It's <laughs> part of the show. They're wrestling on the couch. So what did you think of the S and M aspects of that? Did it turn you on? Well, I'm not. I'm not into S and M, but I I can see how people can be. Um, so I mean, if that was her thing, I totally could get that and that she really wanted to um, go and experience that the video drone show as they called it um, I personally am not into that you don't want people to burn cigarettes on your breasts I really or, don't. or cut you with a razor blade or pierce my ears and yeah. none of that no well what how'd you feel about uh, James Woods as Max Max Wren what'd you think of him in the role I think he was great in the role I mean especially at first he was like what you want me to, you want me to cut you? Like what? I like he even he was looking for sex and violence, but he had he didn't want any part of being in in, in this relationship. Yeah, he like he had no problem watching it, but then when it came down to it, he, like when she asked him to cut her, he was like, oh, I uh, really no. <laughs> and there's a great moment where he looks at her shoulder. She says, "Why don't you cut me here?" And he sees that she's already been cut, and uh, he says, mm -hmm. "It looks like somebody beat me to it." Yeah. But he, he still goes he goes through. Uh, he goes through with that. So, and how did you feel about things like people are smoking all the way through this movie? Did you find that when you're watching it, did, did you think there was too much smoking? Now that we don't have smoking in movies, but everybody's smoking in this film. No, I think it was appropriate for the time. I mean, all those films had smoking, and I mean, it was the 80s, early 80s, so yeah, that didn't bother me at all. Um, now, all of the shows, the softcore pornography, like Samurai Dreams and Apollo and Dionysus and all these shows that people are trying to sell Max Ren, what did those? What did you think about that? Did you ever watch softcore porn on cable? Um, well, I didn't have cable growing up, so basically no. What about as you got older? Um, yeah, maybe like I found the Red Shoe Diaries or something. Oh, that's good. Zalman King. <laughs> I love Red Shoe Diaries. But Don't you all? I think I was much older when I discovered that. So, okay, so let me ask you, when, when the film, when the, the, the plot, he started to hallucinate, and, and mm -hmm. like you saw video cassettes breathing, and the television was was alive, yeah. and he, how did you feel about the hallucinations? I thought the, the, the hallucinations were kind of cool. Um, I liked that aspect of the movie. Yeah, I just, I just didn't quite get how and why. Well, there's a character named Brian Oblivion, this television prophet who only appears on television. And he says that the cathode ray tube, meaning we don't even have uh, CRT tubes anymore. That's what the that's what a television used to be. The cathode ray tube was the retina of the mind's eye. Right. That, that, that everything that you see on television became reality what did you think of brian oblivion and and his pontificating about what television means to the human psyche yeah i mean he was really into television <laughs> um yeah it was weird um that he put so much importance in the tv did you when, when you were growing up i mean did the tv dominate your life did you have shows you watched did you have to like oh yeah i was totally addicted to television i mean i'd come home from school and just start watching tv until i went to bed what were some of the shows that you watched i watched everything anything i could watch i would watch it um i mean do you like sitcoms do you like i loved it all <laughs> i loved it all sitcoms you didn't have a favorite um, show oh um a favorite show well i mean when you're talking about the whole span of your childhood there's so many shows that well yeah see. what were some of them oh um Wow, I should have thought of this before. Um, I know, I gave you no prep time. The whole part of the, <laughs> I, I, this whole show is about ambushing her. Yeah. And, and well. I should drink some more wine, maybe then yeah, I'll Yeah, loosen up. She's very nervous. This is her first <laughs> show. I talked her into this. I'm foisting this on her. So we'll see how this goes. We're only 13 minutes into an hour here. Oh my God. So, I mean, I know you got to wind you up. Now, now, <laughs> when you're watching something like this, were you interested as it, as the movie moved along? Did you get more and more interested in what was going on after you knew it wasn't about just torture and murder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once he starts hallucinating, I'm like, okay, this is getting kind of interesting. Yeah, and then then it 
changed for me. And I was surprised because I thought, how could this, you know, become something that I want to watch? But it did. So when did you, when did you remember when that moment came when you thought it was just about, it was, you, you were, you were literally yelling. You were yelling at me. Yeah, I was so mad. She was very, she was really, really <laughs> so angry that I was, I was like, showing her. This is another eight millimeter. I am not watching this. Well, that's really interesting. Talk about that. Cause you did bring up a, 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 a eight millimeter is course. It's a movie that Andy Kevin Walker, who wrote seven, uh, wrote. What did you think of eight millimeter? And why did this movie remind you of that? Well, first of all, I saw it years ago, and I have tried to forget it. I mean, it just really traumatized me. I just was very um, naive and had no idea that that kind of stuff even existed. So when I watched it, I felt traumatized, and I never wanted to be exposed to something like that again. And you felt that Videodrome was similar to 8mm? Well, yeah, when they're showing, like, torture, they're, like, whipping this girl, and she's, you know being tortured i was like this is this looks like a snuff film to me and i don't i'm not cool with this have you ever seen hostel no have you seen hostel 2 no <laughs> well uh okay um <laughs> i'll stay away from those at least for the time being oh yeah okay if they're so, about that then i don't want to see them but so like like there's a there's a scene in the movie where there's a church brian oblivion has a church the cathold ray mission where he has derelicts coming in, and and he shows them television. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Like, what did that mean to you? And, like, bringing homeless people in off the streets so they can watch TV? Yeah, I mean, I thought they would go more into that. I feel like maybe he was trying to, like, take them over and, and control them with his videos. Um, he was. Yeah, I think. but they didn't show, like, him actually controlling the homeless people, and I wish they had gone more into that, like... To what purpose? Like, why are you trying to take over these homeless people? I mean, I feel like if they had shown um, him telling them what to do or, or they are, like, going on a mission for him or something like that. But I guess there was only so much time. So when the effects started to happen, and, and I mean, obviously now the, the, the thing that dates Videodrome the most is it's all about home video I mean, mm -hmm. Max Wren, he doesn't even have a VHS deck. The videotapes in the movie, even though it was 83, were beta tapes. <laughs> they're all beta, probably because they were smaller. You know, they're not as cumbersome. They look probably better on film. But when the videotape started breathing, yeah, like, did you buy into that? Or was that, like, was that too outlandish for you? Did you be like, ah, uh, video, come on. No, no, I loved that part. I oh, thought you did? that was really cool, yeah. And what about the, when he's, like, making out and when he's caressing the television? Yeah, the TV, and, like, he kind of puts his face into the television. I thought that was kind of cool. Kind of cool. <laughs> like, did it, did it, did it, did you think it was surreal? Like, like. Yeah, totally surreal. So, and you as a fine artist, you, you. Yeah, I could, I could jive with that. Was it like a dolly painting or something? Do you feel. Totally. Yeah. I feel like he was, like, melting into the television. Because that's when you started to turn around on the movie. Yeah. Because I told you to wait. I said, just watch this, and and I promise you it's not going to be just torture yeah. and murder. Right. And so when you got to the hallucination part, you were you you perked up. Yeah, I did. I perked up. You perked up. You weren't ready to put a, a boot in my face. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, but why do you think that is? Why did that make you perk up? Why did suddenly, I mean, because you're watching... It went from it went from, like, torturing and murder as a realistic uh, thing. Like, okay, are we going down this road to something fantastical, something, you know, sci-fi. It became, it became sci-fi to me. And, and that then I could, like, wrap my head around it. But, okay, explain that, though. Like... It became sci-fi to you. What, is, what does that mean? Like, why did it become sci-fi to you? How did you feel that that was science fiction? I, I agree with you. Well, because, you know, you're going from something realistic, like they're torturing this person, and they murder the person, and that it seemed very real. It was very real. And I was not okay with that. But then once it becomes fantasy, it's like, okay, this is, a, this is part of a story that's not real like this person isn't really being tortured she's not really being but murdered. don't you, but they were i mean when the when when the the woman this she says one of my favorite things in videodrome is there's another character an older character who's trying to sell she she sells these shows 
and Max Ren asks her to find Videodrome, and she comes back to him, and she says, don't look, you know, it's, 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 it's like, um, it's like when Taylor is going to ride out, off into the Forbidden Zone, Dr. Zayas is like, don't look for it, Taylor, you might not like what you find, she tells Max Ren, she's like, don't, she says, Videodrome is dangerous, it's one of my favorite things in any horror movie, or sci, I mean, this is a melding of the two, but she mm-hmm. says, don't look for Videodrome, because it has a philosophy, Videodrome has a philosophy, and that's why it's dangerous. Um, did you think that it did? Like once, once, because the movie does take a pretty big right turn. It does into this whole. Now, how did how did that work for you? Like once he's hallucinating, but then, then, then it turns out that we don't want to spoil the whole movie for everybody. I think we have. <laughs> no, because we haven't gotten to the end. I don't think you you can't really spoil Videodrome. You can't really spoil uh, Videodrome. Yeah. Um, yes. So, uh, uh, as the movie moved along, there was elements of conspiracy theory yeah, that showed up. and there which was... was great. I love all that kind of stuff. It just wasn't clear. I wish it was a little more clear. It didn't make a lot of sense. Um, so, there were two separate factions trying to control people through video. And it was kind of this back and forth. But then it didn't really clarify like why are they doing this and to what end like what was the purpose i just they really didn't i mean i have to say i hadn't watched this in a while and it was it was a movie that what people don't understand is at the time you would follow these directors so if a david cronenberg movie came out it was an event any imagination connoisseur was excited you'd go there opening night and you'd puzzle over these movies and this was this was to me a a head scratcher and watching it now (laughs) i really did feel that it's pretty ambiguous. Like, yeah. th- did you feel that? That did you like? Yeah. I, I I didn't. I couldn't explain it to you. Like, I couldn't tell right. you what is this movie about. Like, right. I don't definitively necessarily know. I don't think. Do you know Gilbert? Do you know what's about. <laughs> he does do you know, know what's about? Actually, you come up? I mean, because you were there. Know. Gilbert yeah, actually he... watched Videodrome. He did. And he gets really tense and upset if he hears any kind of... Well, when he feels my tension, then he gets really protective and he drapes himself over me and he's like, are you okay, mommy? Yeah, and (laughs) he was like that when you were yelling at me. Yeah, he was not happy that we were... That I was upset with you. The most tense he ever was was in the uh, in the Game of Thrones episode, The Long Night. Oh my goodness, yeah. He was so freaked out because we were so freaked out. We were was... freaked out by the dragon. And the... Well, no, the, when the White Walkers come. Uh, yeah. The Battle of Winterfell. Yeah, he was, he was very upset. He didn't understand. He could feel it. We weren't even saying anything. We were just like... <laughs> the tension in the air and he was like... <gasps> so, uh, so, now, you realize that you had already seen The Brood? Yes. Yeah, so... so after it was over, what did you say to me? Yeah, because I'm like, this feels a lot like that movie. And I couldn't think of the name because I never remember names of movies or actors or anything. So I was like, Rob, what was that movie you showed me where that alien baby thing is like coming out of her her stomach? Like, what is that movie? You know? This was the first thing Elizabeth <laughs> said to me when Videodrome was over. She, she said this. Yeah. Which is, of course... I think the best of Cronenberg's first six body <laughs> horror movies before he made Dead Zone, um, uh, and I think that um, The Brood is a devastating horror film. And it's so great because it's about what divorce can do and what the destruction of the family can do to children and and spouses and all that. But you you nailed it. You knew. I knew it was the same feel. I was like, the, maybe the same person made this movie. I was like, yeah, I totally. I was that. very proud of her when the first thing she said was 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 it like the brood? You know, was it like that? Yeah. So so, what else can you tell me about Videodrome? I mean, as far as you said you like horror. Yes. Would you recommend this movie to anybody? Well, I mean, you have to like um, classic horror because this is definitely not like horror you would see today. And it's not the kind of horror where you get scared. I mean, there was n- there were no scary parts. Um, I I think I would call this more of a, a sci-fi than a horror. You would. That's interesting. So Lula, come here. Yeah. Why would you call it more sci-fi than horror? Because, like I said, like there were no moments that I felt scared. Well, you were angry. <laughs> I, I mean, was the angry. movie made you angry. <laughs> It made me angry. And um, I mean, isn't isn't murder and torture horror? Yeah, that was horrific. But that you weren't horrific. scared. 
but it felt more science fiction to me once he starts hallucinating it felt very science fiction now what about i mean as, as an artist there was a lot of of surrealism in here like the, yeah. the incongruous images like like living living obviously a videotape is not a lie but when you have a, a, yeah. a, a, a the fact how did you feel about making like these inanimate objects live i loved that part i loved it i thought it was really cool yeah, like a dolly with the melting clocks and all that. It just was very cool. Like the TV starts breathing, and then and then like when the gun, when his 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 body like kind of envelops the gun and it becomes part of his. It hand. became, would you say, a handgun? It was a handgun. It was a handgun. But that was kind of cool. Like watching that that ugh, just. Now, turn into like this handgun. It was very strange. One of the things about Videodrome that people might not know is that Rick Baker, Rick Baker, the legendary makeup effects artist, did the makeup effects for Videodrome. And he made Videodrome, he won the first Oscar for makeup effects in 1980 at the 82 Oscars for the 81 films for American Werewolf in London. This was after that. How did you feel about the makeup effects work? Did you. I mean, obviously, there's no CGI, so it was all practical. Yeah. How did you feel about the makeup effects? I thought it was great. I thought it looked really, really cool. Like, when you see the gun start growing these, like, I don't know, Pent tendrils that, like, go through his skin, and then the skin starts, like, enveloping the gun. I just thought it was, like, really, really well done. Very cool. Very cool. Now, th this idea that... that you know this the new flesh long live yeah. the new flesh and they're talking about you know the the video drum signal will mutate your brain and they talk about how Brian Oblivion passed away but he thought that it was the video drum signal that was causing the tumor mm -hmm. but then the tumor was causing the hallucinations right and this is a this is a hey come on this is a common theme in uh, again with body horror the revolt of of the body against the intellect uh, uh, the mind literally eating the mind from from the inside out via a tumor how do you feel about the whole like body horror thing you know shivers the creatures would turn you basically into these sex crazed maniacs and in the brood <laughs> yeah. you had a woman externalizing her rage mm -hmm. psychoplasmics dr how raglan you know when her rage manifests as these, she's literally growing. She's externalizing her rage and turning them into these children. How do you, how do you feel about the whole idea of body horror as a genre? And what do you think, Cronenberg? Do you think his message is relevant? I love the body horror stuff. I mean, I think that's the most interesting part of this, of his movies. Um, like you said, like the, the her anger becoming this this creature coming out of her. It's just really intense. Now you've you've had to deal with you know as you you've had to deal with your own scares of your own body and things that you've had to had to deal with. Is, is, is does that resonate with you? I mean, obviously you're the mother of two, so you understand. I mean, you actually give you've given birth, you've created life. <laughs> yeah. Maybe having children is the ultimate example of that because there's literally parasites Cause living it's horror. in. <laughs> yeah, because it's live well. It's live parasites are living inside your body. Totally. Like, what was that? What was that like? Like, well, like, I mean, I have to say, my body did not look like being pregnant. I was not one of those women. I was sick the entire time. My body was like, get this out of me. Both of my children were born three weeks early. Like, my body was not happy with having this alien inside of it. So you could relate to the idea of body horror. Totally. Because you you lived it. Yes, I lived it. Um. And in watching these movies, you know, men, it, it was very, Max Wren, it was very male-centric, but we've seen, yeah. like, his Shivers is dealing with reproduction and all that, so he doesn't shy away from no. the sexual impulse or the idea of gestating creatures in your bodies. Now, I asked you if you had seen David Cronenberg's The Fly with Jeff Goldblum, and when I asked you about that, when I said, had you seen The Fly, what did you say to me? No, I have not seen The Fly. She's not yes. seen Cronenberg's The Fly, ladies the and gentlemen. <laughs> Has not seen The Fly. Have not seen The Fly. Um, so, so you haven't seen The Fly. Now, of course, I have to show this to Elizabeth. And, yes, um, I have to see that. Yeah, so... Now, ultimately, if you had to tell somebody... Like, your friend Julia loves, loves horror movies. Well, we kind of uh, went into horror together. Um, 
you now know, you neither, tell neither people your background. What what is your background and where did where did you come from? Did <laughs> and 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 talk about why you didn't grow up watching horror. I grew up pretty conservative, um, conservative Christian. Um, although within the Christian faith, I think we were kind of a liberal family, uh, but still Christian. And so I did not grow up watching any kind of horror film. At were you all. curious about it? Uh, not when I was younger. I mean. When I was really young, my parents were watching Jaws, and they told me to go to bed, and I snuck down, and I was watching from around the corner, and I was really, really young, and it traumatized me. I, like, I was so afraid. I was really afraid, like, that Jaws was going to come out of the toilet and, and eat me. Like, I was that... Come on. Yes, I was scared. Um, and they told me not to watch, but I did. So after that, I was like, I'm not even interested in, in anything scary. I don't ever want to watch anything scary. What was the first horror movie you ever saw? Um, I think it was um, uh, Werewolf in London. Is that what American Werewolf? Rick Baker, American Werewolf in London. Yeah. So my friend and I, Julia, we, uh, we were like, okay, let's start no, watching No, wait, how scary. old were you? This was only a few years ago. Yeah, but how, tell all people how old you were. <laughs> When I started watching horror? Yeah, I mean, a few years ago. It was like 20, 15 years ago. No, not 15 years ago. I would say seven years ago. <laughs> you never watch You never watch a horror movie until seven years well, ago. Well, I probably had seen a few, but nothing, like, super scary, I think. I mean, you were married for 17 years. Yeah. You didn't watch horror movies with your husband? No, not really. Mm -hmm. Well, because he was a Adventist preacher, too. Yeah. Did he have a religious reason for not watching horror movies? No, we just didn't, we just didn't. It wasn't so, something we were interested in. How did horror movies jibe with your religious beliefs? Like, did you find that, that well, your upbringing, I mean, I know you became less and less conservative as you got yeah, older. Yeah, I mean, by the time I started watching horror, I was not, I was not. So you've fallen from the faith. Yeah. Wow, okay, you've fallen from the faith. <laughs> but yet you still don't like it when I make fun of, when I talk about Easter being the first zombie holiday. Yeah, because you're being you're being rude and, and you're being, you know, there, people believe in that. And, and when you when you do that, it's like, it's just not, it's not good. Not good? No. You shouldn't make fun of other people's beliefs. I wasn't making fun of other people's beliefs. I was just, you no, know. No, that's not funny. Sorry. Okay, well, so when you started watching horror films, did you find that certain things affected you because of your belief system more than they might have otherwise? Uh, yeah, not really. By then, I was like ready to watch horror and all kinds of stuff. So, oh, you're ready to break free of I your was ready to break free. the shackles of your beliefs. <laughs> yes, actually, yes. Yeah. And. and you you what you American Wealth was the first <laughs> horror movie you watch. Are there other horror movies that really? What are some of your favorite horror movies? Oh, I love the Insidious movies. I think they're fantastic. Um, you got to meet James Wan. I did. I got to tell him about my favorite part in Insidious Two. I know we meet James Wan. I introduced <laughs> her to James Wan at Charlie De Lazarica's party, and she she the first thing that comes out of her mouth. She doesn't talk about Insidious. She talks no. about Insidious. And Insidious what did you tell him? What did you tell James Wan? Well, because it, there's this one scene where um, you you hear the baby in the baby monitor, and then you hear a slap and a wail, and then the mother's running up the stairs. Like, I just absolutely... And then the door slams in her face, and it just was like, oh, oh my God, they slapped a baby. Yeah. And James Wan loved hearing that. Yeah. He really loved hearing that. I thought that was that was terrific. Well, well, listen, there are a few uh there are some super chats here that that people have fired in. Uh we might as well get to those. Uh the first being um um Sam O'Neill sent in a a a super chat, actually one of two super chats. Hi Rob, words of wisdom are needed. My fire D, my fire D is having birthday drinks tonight in uh, in the city in Brisbane, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if I should go because of the virus. And if I bring it home, I could get my parents sick and will slightly stuff with my gym progress. What do you think I should do? What do you think he should do? You're uh, you're you're you've yeah. gone. I mean, that's a, that's a big concern. I mean, I have older parents too, and. Um... 
um, my inclination would be to, to be super careful. But you're in a bar. So, I mean, why don't you, you know, if you can, yeah, you I can mean, exactly. drink, you're in drink a hard bar drinks. And you're, you're very close. You're standing very close to people. I mean, I don't know how far along um, the virus is in Brisbane, but um, yeah, I probably would not go personally. See, I think you're in a bar. I, I think you should drink copious amounts of whiskey. It's a birthday party. Just keep, you know, dipping your fingers in your whiskey and and, and rubbing oh rubbing the hard liquor on your hand. And and remember, the more the drunk, don't drink beer. Drink hard liquor or drink hard liquor with a beer. In addition to that, I mean, there's some great. Uh, mm. If you're in Brisbane, you're in Australia. I'm a big fan of Coopers. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I would yeah. drink hard liquor. Mm. and uh booze you know booze it up i don't know i don't know if that has anything to do with the virus but anyway uh paul gilmore tips a dollar and says i want to be just like you when i'm all grown up do you think that somebody <laughs> should aspire to be me like you've lived with me we've been together now for five years uh you've gotten to know me pretty well do you yeah. think anyone should possibly aspire to be like me when they get older Parts of you, for sure. Parts of which parts of that? Which parts well, of those? Well, I mean, you're very knowledgeable. You know a lot about movies. You like can just whip it up. Yeah, but that doesn't pay the rent. I mean. Well, I mean. I mean, other than that, that's it. I know a lot about yeah, you're movies. You're very talented. You're very creative. I mean, that's all wonderful stuff. Um. That's not very personal, it, though. What? Like in terms of personal, like, do you think that have I am I a good person? Should should Paul be I mean, like definitely? They, like you're one of the nicest guys I know. Absolutely. Do you know a lot of guys? I mean, I'm like I'm I'm not young, so. Oh, that's true. You look good though. <laughs> Thank Come on. You. Um. Yeah. Um. Movie Fenobi. Uh. Steve. I'm oh, Movie Fenobi. I did not know your name is Steve. Steve is a longtime watcher of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey Rob, great seeing you and Irwin today in the public match. Now no one can complain that you never showed up. <laughs> Love you, man. Get video Drew on Rob's observation. She's in LA three weeks. Keep up the great work. I love video Drew. Thank you for that. What movie Fenobi is talking about is, of course, uh, my team, the Burning Droogs, are doing well in the movie trivia showdown. Uh, Ethan Irwin, big time. Ethan Irwin. That was his first match as a burning droog, and he emerged victorious against Jeff Snyder. So thank you for that movie, Fenobi. We will continue to go on. Paul Gilmore sends in another tip and says, My parents were married on Friday the 13th. I was born years later, and they've been married for 55 years. Wow. It's just like in uh, When Harry Met Sally. 55 years <laughs> later, we still married. Yes. So, well, good on your parents. Tell them, uh, ask them what their first horror movie they ever saw was uh good things do happen on friday the 13th says paul it is friday the 13th That's true. tonight that is true it's true um wow. so uh garen gillam sends in a tip and says rob it just so happens i watched videodrome the other day huh. i didn't consider for one second asking my wife to watch it <laughs> good for you after 14 years together she is way past pretending to like some of the movies i like <laughs> well now you don't pretend you I tell don't pretend. Me- i tell them straight up I but, tell him straight up, I hate this movie, this is awful, or I love this movie, or, eh. Um, <laughs> well, we'll save that for another day, but, but, what? well, I'm not Body gonna, melt? Oh, you gotta, oh, oh okay, body well, melt. okay, since we're talking about this, <laughs> so there's an Australian exploitation <clears throat> movie from the 80s that I never saw, maybe early 90s, eight, called Body <laughs> Melt, and it was released, by the way, Vinegar Syndrome has released a beautiful Blu-ray of this movie. I'd never seen Body Melt. I had it on a Vanguard DVD. I was able to finally acquire it. And I went to her house. We, we, we were not living together yet. Yeah. I went to her apartment in Los Feliz. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> honey, I got I got Body Melt on DVD. And I was so excited to watch it. And I made her watch it with me. Yes. Now, what was your impressions of Body Melt? <laughs> oh, my God, Body Melt. What did you think? I was like, I was sitting there like, why is he showing me this movie? This is the weirdest movie ever. Like, Wow, <laughs> this is what you show a girl when you're first dating. <laughs> Look, man, I was trying to share my enthusiasm for a movie I hadn't seen. I was choosing to share it with you. I don't think we watched the whole thing. I mean, did I, we? I, yeah, we did. Oh, we did. We did watch the whole thing because we got to. I hadn't seen it yet. 
But by the way, yeah, it was an interesting it was, movie. It was a DVD that was actually ripped off. Uh, it was a rip. It was officially released, but it only exists. It was clearly a VHS, a dupe of a VHS uh, tape. But then Vinegar Syndrome. God love Vinegar Syndrome. They're a very small boutique label, but they do good work. They released an unbelievable version of Slava Sukerman's Liquid Sky, which you should get if you haven't seen it. <laughs> get it sight unseen. And they did a, an unbelievable body melt Blu-ray. What did you th so when I made you watch Body Melt, did you have second thoughts well, about it me? It became a joke. It was like now every time I I you know when we're joking around, I bring up Body Melt. Like yeah, you yeah. It's a, as body an melt. insult, as an insult <laughs> that I made you watch watch Body yeah, Melt. Yeah, so it's become special to us. It has become special to us, and I I, I have the Body Melt disc on display prominently. Yes. Uh, uh oh, Gilbert has has there we go, buddy. Okay, so um, let's see. <laughs> Anonymous sent in a tip and said, and just what about the sound of music, you two? Oh, my God, sound of music. Turnabout is fair play and all. Yeah, yeah. Cronenberg Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, why don't you explain this yeah, sound so, of music situation? Yeah, this is very frustrating. So I just cannot get Rob to watch sound of music. He has never seen the sound of music. And two years ago, Sophie, my daughter, bought... Uh, the 50th, I think it was the 50th anniversary. Blu-ray. Blu-ray of Sound of Music for Christmas. And I put it in one night and he was totally making fun of it. And I got so mad that I turned it off and I just, he just, I have to like, you just don't deserve to watch this right now. So, but since then I have not been able to get him to actually sit down and watch the movie. So if any of you can convince him, like, I feel like he really needs to see The Sound of Music. It's certainly a blind spot. And I know it's directed by Robert Wise. It's so good. Academy Award winning film. I mean, I should watch it. And it's... we love musicals, so I really don't We do love musicals. We watch La La Land watch many times. We love Amelie. Yeah. What are our favorite movies together? Amelie, for sure. Amelie is, we bonded over Amelie. We yeah. met We met online because of Amelie. 96% match on OK Cupid. Yes. Because of Amelie. Because of Amelie. You know. Um, uh, Captain Confidence Entertainment sends in a super chat and says he wants to see a horror movie where God Faith saves the day. Well, hmm. uh, Final Conflict, Omen 3, Jesus comes back at the end and saves the day. Pretty much. So there are, there are movies where, I don't know what, what Gilbert is doing. Something Gilbert. terrible. But I, I would say the first thing that comes to mind is the final conflict, <laughs> Omen Three, uh, the where where uh, that that it, it, they do save the day. God does save the day. Well, so let me ask you this: So, had you ever dated anyone? Have you ever been with anybody that was so into movies? Because you do love movies. I love movies. Love movies. Um, no, actually, you were my first, you know, movie guy. Movie guy. Well, I mean, I'm your first movie guy. <laughs> intensely movie guy intensely movie guy yeah so it's been wonderful i mean your collection of movies is very extensive it is fun to go through and um watch things that i've never even heard of um when we first started dating you used to curate and say okay tonight you need to see this oh that's right i did i bring over stacks of movies to your house yeah it was great and i learned a lot i mean i and we watched a bunch of you know classic things and and newer things and and i ate it all up i loved it which is good uh claude hibbert sent in a super chat and said rob i'm watching with the wife the sound of music is amazing yes tell him <laughs> Look, no doubt. I mean, it's it's a it's a classic Academy Award winning movie directed by the man Robert Wise, uh, who directed the Andromeda Strain. Maybe that's who, my goal this year is to make you actually watch it respectfully, and uh, and like it. <laughs> well, I, I probably will like it. I mean, I'm sure it's it's just I've just never yes. watched it. I've I've never watched I've never watched the film. So, um, so when I asked you to do this show. This yeah. is the first ep this pilot episode. Maybe there won't be another one. Who knows? How do you feel about doing this now? What yeah, do you? This is fun. I mean, Are you guys I having fun? I mean, you're <laughs> loosening up, loosening up. Well, yeah. Yeah. This is qu this is quite a nice bottle. This is of wine. actually really good. It's wine. really good. This is really good wine. Very good wine. I'm gonna I'm gonna pour <clears throat> myself a little bit more. We're all, this will be the end of it. Oh well, give me a little more. Oh, I like that. Okay, there yeah, you go. Okay, thank you. 
And uh, I'll kill that bottle. There, there's the. Uh, <laughs> there it goes. There, there, there it goes. Um, okay, so by the way, what we're drinking tonight is Bewitched Pinot Noir. Actually, hang on. Let me go back to the. Uh, let me go back to the uh, so people can see this. By the way, <laughs> this show is not in any way sponsored by Bewitched Pinot Noir. Yeah, but it's really, really good. It's really, really good. <laughs> Russian River Valley. Um, uh, I, I would recommend this. This is a fine, fine, fine bottle of wine. Yeah, it's very good. And we got this at Vaughn's. It was $25 off. So if you go to the Vaughn's here on Sierra Madre. Yes. On Sierra Madre in Pasadena. I'm they, sure all the Vaughn's have it on sale. They might have it on sale. They don't have any toilet paper, but they have <laughs> this true. fine drop for you. Yes. So um, now now back to, to, back to uh, the idea of horror films. And, and you haven't seen The Fly. You haven't seen... I gave her daughter, uh, Zoe, a framed one sheet I had for the movie Crash, Cronenberg's film Crash. Mm. Now, how do you feel? You've never seen Crash. No, but then when you explain to me what it is, I don't ever want Zoe to see that movie. She's Even 19. The, pa- the poster no, 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 is 19. hanging in her room. Um, no. Well, what's really great is Crash has been restored in 4K and it's available on Amazon Germany. It's first place it'll be out, uh, and I do have it on pre-order. So I look forward to having <laughs> Girls' Night In, where I'm going to show <laughs> Crash to you and Zoe at the same no, time. No, I think I should see it first before No, Zoe. no, no. That'll, uh, she's 19 years old. Yeah, I know she's 19, but she's still my daughter. Yeah. You think I'm going to do anything to hurt your daughter? Well, no, I wouldn't. I didn't we say all live together. I didn't say you would hurt her, but, like, I... From what you've explained this movie is about, I don't think... She has the one sheet hanging in her room. Yeah, it's been there does. for like two years. Okay. She's had many friends and boys in that room. <laughs> okay, okay. So I think that they should be able to watch it. We'll see. I'll, I'll, I want to preview it first. Really? Yeah, I kind of do. I'm her mom. Come on, Always man. Her mom. She's an adult. Mom. She's over 18. Yeah, she's 18. She's over 18. She's, she's still a child. She's 18. Well, so getting back to Videodrome, um, like, what do you think the movie, what does it leave you with? Like, like, what is your takeaway from the film? Like, you've had a, you've had an all day to contemplate it. You knew we were going to be on this show. And yeah. What, what, what are you looking back over the experience of watching, of course, the Criterion <laughs> Blu-ray of David Cronenberg's Videodrome? By the way. Criterion knocked it out of the park with this. Uh, it's quite... And by the way, can I just say, uh, when you take out the disc, <laughs> it looks like a beta cassette. And it's not a VHS cassette, it's beta. It's a little <laughs> elongated, but uh, long live the new flesh. Kudos to Criterion. It'd be if, great if it started breathing and stuff. And yeah. Like... Well, that's good. It, it's, yeah. it's great if it started breathing. You're absolutely right about that. So... If you're still buying physical media and you haven't yet acquired this at the next Barnes & Noble sale, I highly recommend Videodrome. Yeah, okay, Rob, but let me ask you, how many versions of this do you have? Oh, okay. You gotta go there? Yeah, I gotta go there. I only have one. That's the only one I have. What? I only have one. Ver- so why okay, guys, you- everybody, Rob has, like, multiple, multiple, multiple versions of the same film. Okay. So like, which you always. I'm un- surprised he only has one of these because normally it's about four. The average is four. Four versions of every. Movie. That isn't true. That's I, why his collection is so huge. That isn't true. <laughs> I have I have four versions of just a few movies, uh-huh. like To Live and Die in L.A. What was and- the movie today? You were telling me you were gonna get again another version of it. Oh uh, okay. Okay, that one you probably have ten versions. Okay, you want to go it. there? Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. I told you, Second Sights, they announced that Dawn of the Dead is dropping. Pre-orders okay, begin March Okay, how 20- many people think that 10 versions of one movie is a little too much? Not when it comes to George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. I have a fetishistic attachment to this movie and only. Yeah, but it- when's the last time you watched it? Uh, well, the last time I watched it... Probably didn't when you, go you and see showed it? me. Yeah, but no, no. The la- I'll tell you when the last time I watched Dawn of the Dead was. I watched the 4K version with Bill Hunt at his house on his giant home theater screen to look at how the 4K version looked. And when the but Nick- did you watch the whole thing? No, 
We didn't watch the whole thing. Okay. I've seen the movie a hundred times, so I want to see what the transfer looked like. So, okay, if you've seen it a hundred times, why do you need, like, ten versions of it? Because you got to get the best version, and each version's different. I mean, there's something about... Okay, so you own the best version, but you've never No, the best watched. version has never come out yet, and, and that's what Second Sight... Second Sight, the UK video company, Second Sight, like, like here, um... Okay, but you're going to get the best version. Are you going to watch it? Yeah, I'm going to watch it. And I can't wait to get it. Are you going to watch it all the way through? I'm going to watch it all the way through. So <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, why are you going to be I that don't way? I know, guys. Come on, man. I don't know. Well, uh, I, 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 yes, I'm going to watch all the way through. I've seen Dawn of the Dead. It was the first bootleg. By the way, <laughs> Dawn of the Dead, for those of you keeping score, was the very first bootleg video cassette I ever owned. Before it was released on Thorn EMI mm -hmm. Home Video, which is the first VHS release of Dawn of the Dead, uh, uh, these guys that gave me my first job, uh, Bud Warner and Steve Pitcher, Bud Warner had, he showed me uh, I Drink Your Blood, he showed me Texas Chainsaw, he showed me all these things. Um, while Simon Gilmore sends in a super chat and says, you guys are just <laughs> like my parents. Oh, shit. I love it. <laughs> Well, thanks, Simon. Wow, Simon's a good man. Good guy. Uh, your parents are rad. Say, say. They must be. Uh, give, give, give them a big happy hi and hello. We're like his parents. We're like his parents. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad because if you had friends over, I'd be like, hey, you guys want to watch Videodrome? You want to watch Sound of Music? No. I, <laughs> how about Crash? Why don't we watch Crash? Why don't we all gather together? Let's watch a Serbian film. You're Serbian. You're half Serbian. Oh, okay, don't bring that up, please. Okay, not a Serbian film, but you're, let's talk about your background. Yes. Hey. <laughs> wait. I, Vesna's probably not watching this, but Aww. this, this, ladies and gentlemen, is my favorite Yugoslavian movie. It's in Serbo-Croatian. <laughs> and yes, by the way, this is a VHS tape. I do have this on Laserdisc as well and DVD. If you've not seen this movie, Joseph uh, Vesna, I'm telling you. Hey, Baba Reba. I love I'm this sure film. I'm sure they've seen it. This is it's not it's not called Hey Baba Reba in uh I love this movie, but it is in Serbo-Croatian with English subtitles just so you know. Yeah, I've never seen it. It's really really good. So, <laughs> tell people about your background. You're 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 a uh, you're of mixed nationalities. Yes, so my both my parents immigrated together to this country. Uh, my mother's French. Mm -hmm. And my father is Serbian, or was, was Serbian. So, so Serbian, French, uh, and did they are they movie lovers? Your mom's kind of a movie lover. Both of my parents loved movies. My dad absolutely loved movies, and um, he even directed plays and things like that. Like he really, he really loved that. Um, <laughs> the Echo Base Network. By the way, if you guys Echo Base Network is somebody who's been very, they've been very supportive. They did a documentary on the um, they they on the, on the sequel trilogy, the response to Disney's Star Wars sequel trilogy. They just passed a hundred thousand views. I wasn't <clears> able to go on their hundred thousand views party, but the Echo Base Network is great. They send in a super chat, and they say, Robert Meyer Burnett, you let girls in your garage? <laughs> yeah, because we have cooties. No, they no. I I do let girls in my garage. I got a couch. I got a couch right there. Oh, oh what are you implying? Well, I'm just saying, I mean, you know, they're, they're, you're like the first, you're like the only girl that comes in here regularly. It's not oh, like... Oh, because you have girls come in here that are not regularly? Well, no, Tallulah. <laughs> Tallulah, and, and Tallulah is, here, Tallulah, come here. The only girl that comes in here is this bitch. <laughs> Aww, right? she's a sweetie. This is Tallulah. She is half Irish setter and half doodle. Poodle. Oh, I said half doodle? Yeah. Half poodle. She's, she's, she's full a, doodle. She's full doodle, but she's half Iris Setter and half poodle. Yeah. Aren't you? Here, give me, give me a kiss, oh, baby. Oh, Gilbert's jealous. Oh, yes. Look at that. Oh, yes. She loves to lick my face. Oh, she's a sweetheart. I was born. It's like cat. It's uh, <laughs> uh, Chevy Chase and Caddyshack. I was born to love you. I was born to lick your face. I was born to rub you, but you were born to rub me first. <clears throat> that is a deep cut. So, uh, oh, Ben Rayner sends in a super chat and said, loved the Schmodown match today, R&B. You know why you did? Because the Burning Droogs won. A lot of people <laughs> counted me out as far as the Schmodown is concerned, but our team, the Burning Droogs, we kicked ass. We yeah, kicked well, ass. Yeah, well, you assembled a really great team. Uh, yes. 
Uh, Echo Base Network sends a super chat and says, we love you guys, and you are part of the Echo Base Network as well. Well, I would <laughs> cool. like to think so, because, uh, by the way, I love uh, I love your, uh, underneath your logo, you've, you, uh, for those of you who don't know what the Echo Base Network is, or what Echo Base is, shame on you, shame on you, uh, yes, uh, I think <clears throat> that, uh, you know, my friend Greg Smith, who's a moderator on my channel, he built an Imperial probe droid, just so you know. He calls her Priscilla, Queen of the Glacier. So <laughs> thank you for that. So ultimately, let's go back to our movie. And if you haven't known what this is, uh, it's Videodrome. Uh, directed by David Cronenberg, his sixth feature film. Now ultimately, what are your, your wrap-up thoughts? Like, like are we should, it's your first show. It's your show. Uh, Eliza Views. <laughs> Eliza great Views. name. Uh, great name. This is Eliza Views. It's going to be this new show. We're, we'll see if people like this. I don't know. Maybe no one will watch it, but we've got a, a decent amount of you here. We, we love yeah, having you. Yeah, let us know if you like this. Yeah, tell we, us what you want. If you hate it, we won't do it anymore. I mean, she's only been on the Comic-Con show and this show, but I, I figured why not? I mean, I think whining about movies. Yes, cheers whining to that. about movies. Salud. It's all about the wine. Mm. Gilbert, you're not eating a... You're not eating anything, are you? So... Ultimately, why would you, in summation, how what would you tell somebody about Videodrome? What would you say? Yeah, I mean, I guess if you like um, classic films, older films, and you like strange sci-fi horror, watch it. Otherwise, you might not like it. Well, I mean, I think it's compelling. It's a little dated because obviously the video technology is ancient. So, well, yeah, but you have to take that into context, like when you're watching it. And um, if now, you do that, you might kind of enjoy it. Now, I'm going to tell people, uh, uh, I'll tell people, I worked for one of the producers of Videodrome, uh, Pierre David, <clears throat> and the Image Organization. I was a reader for his company. A reader means I read screenplays for his company. And when I was there, I was reading things like Scanner Cop. And one of the things that I had pitched was, and this is in the, this is probably in the mid nineties when I was working for Pierre David. And he had produced a number of Cronenberg's movies with his partner, uh, Victor Solnicki. And I had suggested back in the nineties that you could do an internet remake of Videodrome or Videodrome 2, The New Flesh, or something. And um, uh, they never went for it, but I still think I I still think that Videodrome could make... Could, somebody should either remake it or do a sequel about the internet. Oh, that would be cool. Would that be cool? Yeah. By the way, uh, Robert, ben, uh, Robert Benham sent in a super chat and says, <laughs> Love the new show, Rob and Elizabeth. Keep Yay. it up. Awesome. So here's well, cheers to Robert. What should we watch next? No, you can't... No, oh. the whole you don't. They don't get to pick. <laughs> Sorry, you guys don't get to pick. Rob gets to pick. I get to pick. I'm the curator of this channel. <laughs> Sorry, don't give suggestions, please. Oh, hey, D Dieter Bastian, remember Dieter? He sent the video <laughs> yes. in. Hey, Rob, it's <laughs> yeah, shiny. It's shiny. Yeah, you like that video. <laughs> yeah. Dieter's awesome. Dieter Bastian <clears throat> is from Deutschland. <laughs> By the way, w w what country is putting out Cronenberg's Crash before <clears throat> any other country? Deutschland. That's right. And I have pre-ordered that shit on Amazon Deutschland. Yes. So Dieter Bastian is an old watch, old school watcher. He's one of my uh, 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 core audience members. And, and Dieter's great. Dieter says, don't be too mad at Elizabeth. Or, or don't be too mad at Elizabeth about Rob buying multiple versions of a movie. <laughs> because this behavior, unfortunately, cannot be cured. Yeah. I have the same symptoms. No, it's true. I, I, I don't think it can be cured. So, I, I mean, I tease him and I poke him about it, but honestly, like, he's going to do it. Yeah, so. in the middle of the night, like four in the morning. Why do you buy multiple copies of... Yeah, why I is wake it, you up. Why? Four why copies there? of Gladiator. <laughs> why do you have that? Although, she did allow me to hang a Polish to live and die in L.A. movie poster in our bedroom. That's true. It is we true. We have a lot of movie poster posters in our bedroom. We do. Well, good ones. Above our bed, we have Dracula is Risen from the Grave and Belle du Jour. Yeah, it actually looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. See? Come on. Oh. <laughs> but we also have an Amelie poster in our bedroom. Japanese Amelie poster. Yeah, it's pretty cool, too. Um, uh, hang on. We're, we're, uh, 
Robert Meyer Burnett tipped a dollar. Did I? I will. Yes, I will watch Sound of Music, and I will like it. <laughs> uh, that's very funny. Why did funny. you do that? I didn't. Somebody said that. that I didn't. Uh, did I did it? Somebody didn't said my name. Good job. I'm going to hold that too. Uh, I'm going to hold um, you to that. So, uh, <laughs> Darren Gillum sent in a tip and says, Rob reignited my interest in physical media, plastic models, and most recently in six scale figures, I now have multiple versions of several movies. My wife has a beef with Rob because of this. Oh, shit. <laughs> By the way, it is tons of fun watching you guys drink and talk. <laughs> Well, that's good. Well, cheers to that. Here's to you, Garen. Just so you know, I haven't eaten anything all day, so yeah, this is getting to me. Mm. Well, don't I always tell you that alcohol is food? This is grapes. That's it's... true. It's full of calories. Well, it's food. You can live off. You can live off beer. Uh, Adam Jimenez sent his super chat and said, I just got here. And I see Videodrome talk. I love this. <laughs> well, Adam, since you we, we're kind of away from Videodrome, let's get back to Videodrome. Yes. Um, at the end, <clears throat> at the end of the movie, well, should we spoil it? I mean, look, if you haven't seen Videodrome, oh come on, it's so old. Like, if you haven't seen it, when yeah. when Max Wren blows his head off <laughs> with his handgun, and he says, yeah. "Long live the new flesh." Do you think that Max Wren really killed himself? Do you, do you no, think, he was becomes, that a hallucination or, or did he really blow his head off? I think he becomes like his girlfriend. He becomes like this video person. Well, what does that mean? Like he's still a means. real flesh and blood person? No, no, he's a video. Well, no. Okay. So he's in a, he's in a boat. He goes, he's Nikki keeps saying, come to Nikki, come to Nikki. Yeah, but that's cause she, that wasn't, it was, Okay. Well, what okay, does that mean? But what she's do you think? also dead, physically. But he's hallucinating her, so she's not. Do you think they join each other in the video afterlife? Totally, totally. Okay. <laughs> All right. I I I'm not going to. Uh, I won't. I won't. What, what What are your thoughts? What? Well, this is not my show. This is Elizabeth. Yeah, but I want to know your thoughts. My thoughts about the end of the movie: "Long Live the New Flesh." <clears throat> I don't believe that James Woods actually kills himself at the end of the movie. I do think mm. that what happens is his brain, that's all a hallucination. But whatever okay. is going on, I think the Videodrome signal is real. I don't think it's all, I think there's a real thing. And that I think what happens with his mind is whatever the tumor that's been growing in his brain, I think that is the transition point where his perception of reality irrevocably changes into whatever it is that is. We don't know what that is yet, but I don't think he actually kills himself in the movie. At least that's my reading of the film. That his mind, the tumor is real. Like Brian Oblivion, he died, but Max Wren transcends that hmm. and becomes something else. Interesting. I have to think uh, about that. Sadu's screening room sent in a super chat and said, La Mau. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> the obesity rates if alcohol was food. Dude. Yeah, totally, right? I, I think they would go down. I mean, wine wine, pe wine speeds you up. Well, Look at the obesity that, rates already. Yeah, but except people drink this with food. We're just drinking this without food. Oh, uh, 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 um, whining about movies. Claude Hibbert sends in another <laughs> super chat and says, whining about <clears throat> movies should review The Sound of Music or Amelie. Yes, both. Now tell okay since you brought up Amelie <laughs> tell tell the the folks out there where I took you. Oh, okay. So the director Jean Pierre Genet. Yes. So there was a screening of Amelie. It was just last year because mm -hmm. it was the twentieth anniversary. Twenty. Yes. Okay. So, well, it wasn't the twentieth anniversary, but it was. It was something. It was close. I, I think the twentieth anniversary is next year. The twenty. Oh, so why the screening? I don't know. It's just he was there. I think they were showing his movies. Anyway, so it was we at went the American the Cinematheque. It, yeah, we went to the screening, and he was there, and he had a talk afterwards, and and what did I what did I make you What did we do before okay, the screening? Okay, so before the screening, we went to your poster place. Okay, there is a woman in L.A. <laughs> Her name is Debbie, and she has a a, a gallery called La Magerie. L apostrophe, uh, I imagine, the Imagination Gallery, the Imagine Gallery. 
she can get any movie poster. She has a lot of what I call big paper, and I was convinced that she would have an original French Amelie poster. But not only does she have posters, she has actual art. Yeah. So, like, she has a pretty amazing gallery there. Back in the mid uh, the mid aughts, when I was much wealthier, I did spend about a hundred thousand dollars buying posters. I sold them all, but I knew that she would have a Amelie poster. Yeah. Did I not? Yeah. The original French. It's a huge poster. And? Yeah, so we bought the this ginormous poster. It's ginormous. Which I I wish that we had gotten a smaller one because now it's like we don't know where to hang We're going to frame it. Put it in our room. So anyway, I everyone was like crowding him and trying to get signatures, but they all had like their, their Blu-ray or their DVDs that they wanted him to sign the cover. And homegirl and, here, and what I'm, did you say? I'm pretty tall, so I'm like up to the front, and I have my poster, like this giant poster. But what did you bust out? So in French, I asked him, will you please sign this? What, what, say it in French. Oh, come on, man. No, you, You're going to put me on the spot. No, yeah, well, it, it's, it's not like, like we're talking. It's not like you're speaking in French or something. You speak French fluently. Your mom's yeah, French. Yeah, I know. But well, I what mean, did you ask him in French? Well, I asked him to sign my poster. How did you ask him? <laughs> I asked him in French. Yeah, how did you say it in French? <laughs> oh, come on, dude. Um, well, what do you mean? Come on, did you say it in so French? I asked him in French to sign. You speak sign... to your mom in French. All... Why can't you just say it in French? Just say it. <laughs> what did you ask him? Well, I... I just asked say him to sign. Oh my god! Poster. I can't believe you talk French. In why would French. you not? Why would you not speak French? Just speak French for them. They're not going to believe you speak French. Talk. Just say it. Go. What did you say in French? You're putting me on the spot. It's not putting you on the spot. Tell, tell how you said uh, sign. Of, I don't understand. You, you speak French fluent, fluently. <laughs> I'm basically asking you to say repeat after me. Why don't you tell them? Tell them what you said. Speak. Speak French. <laughs> Dance, monkey, dance. Oh, no, come, come on, on speak man. French. Why can't you speak? Why, why, oh, man. Why wouldn't you not speak in French? I don't get it. Well, I'm not quite ready for that. I've had a lot of wine. and You speak French fluently. Yeah. Okay, well, pretend, you're, uh, pretend I'm your mom and speak to me in French. <laughs> okay, I'm Josiane. Anyway, Just say so... in French. Say something in French. Anything. Uh, I don't understand why you won't talk in French. <laughs> why won't you talk? Just say one thing. <laughs> I, you're putting me on the spot. But how is that putting you What's on the spot? You mean? actually speak that language. You're embarrassing me. Just say <laughs> anything in French. I'm embarrassing yeah, you. Yeah, speak it. It's, it your people are going to be like, oh, you didn't really. Like, what did you actually say? So I asked him in French to sign my poster. How did you ask him in French? Like, I don't understand why you can't speak. Why can't you just say, like. <laughs> uh, so my, my French nickname is Babette. Okay, there you go. And uh, Babette is a, a nickname for the name Elizabeth. And my family calls me Babette. So I asked him in French to sign the poster to And how Babette. did you ask him in French? <laughs> oh my God, you're not going to let this no, go. No, just say it. It's just like two <laughs> seconds. And like, I don't understand. So I asked him. It was amazing because she, she brought, there's all this crowd around him. And as soon as you spoke French, she was like, oh, wow, I'll talk to you. And then you, she signed the poster. He did. He was like, oh. Yeah, but what did you say to him? I just asked him in French to sign the poster to me. I can't believe you to, wouldn't talk in French. To well, Babette. In French. And he was impressed, I have to say. I can't believe you just won't. Why won't you talk in French? Maybe another episode. When I, at the beginning, when I'm not so. Uh, when you're not so having <laughs> wine? Like what, you can't, like, I'm having wine too, but I can't, like, I speak English and I'm like, Mr. Genet, would you please sign my poster? You can't say that? No. Oh my God. Anyway, it was amazing. He signed the poster. We have this ginormous Amelie poster. Signed by Jean-Pierre Genet. Yeah, that I don't know where to hang. It's hey. so big. Hey. Tallulah's been pretty good. <laughs> um, a, a Mukbang Reviews sends in a super chat and says, The live chat appreciates the new show. Can you give a rating for the film? Uh, for the mm -hmm. film. If you gave a rating, if you gave a rating, uh, like, okay, uh, how many glasses of wine... <laughs> How many glasses of oh, wine is Videodrome where on a scale, on a scale of, um, let's say, how many bottles of, how many glasses does a bottle have? Four? Yeah, I would say four. Okay, let's say, okay, this is what we're doing. We're christening the scale <laughs> on, uh, on, uh, Elizaview's. So, this bewitched bottle of wine on a scale of one to four glasses of wine, what would you give Videodrome? Four being the most, the best, Ugh, one being the least. so hard because 
I have to say I didn't love it at first, but then it changed. But then it was also very confusing. It didn't make sense. But then I also really liked it. Oh, okay. Uh, That's good. I would say three and a half. Three and a half glasses of wine. Three and a half. David Cronenberg's sixth feature film, Videodrome, from 1983, according to <laughs> Elizabeth View, your, her, the Elizabeth's View, the Elizabeth View, <laughs> as far as Videodrome is concerned, is three and a half glasses of wine out of four. Well, that's kind of high. Well, it is kind of high. I'm surprised. Three and a half out of four. Because in the end, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the weird, surrealist. Yeah, I mean, so you, would, would you like to reassess, perhaps? <sighs> but for... at the beginning, honestly, I was really pissed off. Right. You had a, you elicited an emotional response from you. So maybe two and a half would be okay. That's more I think it's fair. All right, so <clears throat> let's reassess. The judges now say for David Cronenberg's sixth feature film, Videodrome from 1983, Elizabeth Hughes gives it how many? Two and a half. Two and a half glasses of wine. Can you say that in French? <laughs> oh, God. Just say it. My, it's you part know of your what? show. How about? Well, I don't understand about, why you're. Not, I listen to speak do, French all the do, time. How about we do like di- debut five hundred four? And um, if if you subscribe, if we reach how many people are already? This is already then my channel. I will speak French. Okay, okay, fine. If the Burnett network gets twenty five thousand subscribers, and that's it, that's close. Like, it should 20, be higher than that. No, but that's because uh, you're almost to twenty five thousand view uh, subscribers. Well, okay, but you you can speak French like. Since you were a okay, kid, let, let's say it's not a big reveal. Okay, fine. It is a huge o- reveal. On our first, okay, fine. Let's say fifty thousand subscribers. That'll take another year. We don't have to go that high. Let's say thirty thousand subscribers, and I will speak French. What would be really interesting is that thirty thousand subscribers. If the Burnett work gets thirty thousand subscribers, we'll do a show where she only speaks French. Oh no 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 no! That's too much. Why is it too much? You speak fluent French. I know I can't do a whole show in French. Well, I'll be be speaking English. Well, okay. Anyway, okay, I don't understand I will why speak you can't French at thirty thousand subscribers. Let's just say that. You know, I did say I would show people my wall of Hot Toys figures at twenty. And you 000. never did. I haven't done it yet, but because cause... there is no wall yet of Hot. Toys. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of Hot Toys. They're just we haven't. There's there's stuff that has to move around. If you notice, by the way, the Rob Observatory set has changed since this afternoon. I am now enveloped. I have moved things around. There are things happening in here all the time. Yeah. What do you think cool. of that? I like, it. I like yeah, it. There's more room in here. I like the... the Although, wor- I, I really want to see the Hot Toys wall. Well, I want to see the Hot Toys <clears> wall. <throat> there is a wall. If you th- if you th- look all up there, there's a lot of... No, How- no, no. You need to like have a whole wall. I know. I. What do you think about my Hot Toys? I love the hot toys, but what upsets me is that they're in boxes and they're not being displayed, and people are not seeing them. Well, we we have them. There's some are displayed. The, half of them are in boxes. Well, more than half. Yeah, that's like. I would like to have them out. You know, it would be nice. We got to do that. So. Yeah. So yeah. Well, listen. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't want this to degenerate into something. Now, now that you've done your first episode of Eliza Views, whining, <laughs> whining about movies, uh, if you like what you see here, please give it a like. Uh, we're going to, this is obviously, this is a pilot. This is a pilot. So we don't know where this is going to go. Please comment favorably or, or subscribe or hit like. Or as Davey504 says, slap like now. <laughs> and uh, we're going to probably do these three days a week. That would be the plan. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now, what's interesting is you are a student at the Pasadena's prestigious Art Center College of Design, but you can't... What happened there? Yeah, so uh, my school has uh, basically shut down, and we are going to be doing classes online. So that'll be interesting doing uh art classes online classes online yeah so you'll be here so at least for the I'll next couple here. weeks we'll we'll do these oh Sadu screening room sent in a super chat and said let mm-hmm. at thirty thousand k at thirty thousand subscribers let her speak french and you speak <laughs> klingon that would be awesome oh that's pretty funny that you said. hang on hold on wait um <clears throat> keep talking 
<laughs> me? <sighs> Just so you know, I'm not some dilettante. I'm not somebody that, uh, you know, maybe I will speak some Klingon. That would be awesome. Mark Okrand, uh, the, this is uh, my Klingon. <laughs> you know, it's really interesting. I have lots of, I have lots of, I have lots of, you know, I'm also going to start doing a new show, these short 10 minute videos called uh, The Observatory, Off the Shelf in the Observatory, where I'm just going to riff on something I have. How much stuff do I have here? Oh my God. You guys have no idea. Like, this is just like, this is like, one sixteenth of what he has. Not even like there's just so much stuff in here. You have no, you have no idea how much stuff he has. And what frustrates me is that he needs to be sharing all of this stuff. Sister the Harrow in the chat says, "Can you drink tequila next time?" Oh, <laughs> tequila sounds good. It does sound good. It does sound good. <laughs> yeah. So no, there's a lot of stuff in here. I I could take stuff off the shelf. I'm gonna call it off the shelf. Whether it's action figures, model kits, books, comics, I mean, <laughs> uh, f uh, movies, there's a lot of stuff in here. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot of stuff in boxes. Well, you got to keep them in good shape, you know. He could open up a museum. No, no, there's a lot of people that have a lot more stuff than I do. Like, you know, I always talk about Justin's Collection. One of my favorite YouTube channels is Justin's Collection. It's good. Oh, is he the, the figure? Yeah, figure. Figa. Look at this new figure. <laughs> Look at this figure. She can actually quote YouTubers <laughs> that I watch, like Justin's collection. She loves figure. figure. Look at this. Look at this new figure. Yeah. By the way, I, I recommend anybody who's interested in hot toy hot toys subscribe to Justin's channel, Justin's collection. I love everything he does. It's it's great. Oh, it's Sam. Worth just hearing his accent. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sam O'Neill sent in a super chat and said, "I don't know if you've answered my stream." <laughs> stream elements message yet i just tuned in but screw it i'm drinking tonight let's go <laughs> hashtag drinks for rob sam we did answer your question you were the first you had already sent in this yeah. chat and we 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 talked about actually we talked about it for a long time yeah, whether or not we kind of disagreed like i was telling you to like not risk it and he was telling you to just I, I said Sam O'Neill you should drink basically bathe in whiskey yeah I said what you gotta do is get some whiskey and some beer but maybe get a little vodka that you can just dip your fingers in and keep doing like this instead of Purell just you know get some by the way you're in Brisbane or 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 uh, uh, I mean Brisbane I've, I haven't been to Brisbane I've been of course I've been to Tamworth Australia so I'm glad. Oh, wait. Sister Harrow sent in a super chat saying, contribution to the next wine bottle. Yay! I know. I'm, I'm a Here's little... Uh, wine. I'm a, I'm, I'm a little out of... I'm a little out of wine. Yeah. Mm. This is really good wine. This is a fantastic drop. And, and we can't get $50 bottle wine. Well, look. We, I'm, we're not going to do that. We're not going to buy... This was... We were at the grocery store. It was like the fall of Saigon at the grocery store. <laughs> And I picked this. It's bewitched, obviously. It's a, it, this is a great Pinot Noir. It's very good. It's very good. See, look, look. You had a little bit more wine. You're a little bit more loose now. It's good. We got more people watching. Sister Harrow sent a super chat to buy more wine. Totally. Which is fantastic. <laughs> you know, I've been rearranging the the observatory. It's gonna be. It'll be great. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Um. So Sam O'Neill, you know, answering questions, which is all good. So ultimately, as we bring this first episode, our pilot episode. Are you episode, sure you got all the super chats? Because you I often got, miss. No, I got all the super chats. Wait, how do you? Oh, see, look at that. How do you look at all of them? Uh, you the super chat? No, we got all okay, the super chats. Okay, let's make sure. We yeah, did. Okay, okay. We got all the super okay. chats. I love that yeah, somebody I've said. Got you, I, got I love you that back. Robert Meyer. Oh, we just got another super chat. Another oh, super yeah. chat came in. Oh, Richard, thank you for that. <laughs> Um, Richard Ganther sent in a nice super chat and said, coming in late, my God, I love this. Thank you. <laughs> well, okay, wait a minute. Thank Can you, you do me a favor? What? Okay, in, in, see that, that cabinet over there? Yeah. Can you open that cabinet? What's in there? Just, just go up there and, and since, since you love this, we'll just keep going. Just slide, no, no, other way, other way, slide, no, no, other way. Slide, okay, grab that container, grab that can that's right there. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So sit down. <laughs> We've got uh, Santa Monica Brew Works Beach Brewed. So, as you can see, I'm out of my wine. Wait, what is that? It's beer. Uh, I don't drink beer. Just drink beer. No, I don't drink beer. Mm. 
Why not? I don't like it. You don't like beer? Mm -hmm. I don't like beer. You want to try this? Not really. It's not an IPA. Well, I'm not quite done with my wine. Okay, well, well, since, uh, you know, Richard Ganther is here and sent in a super chat and said, coming in late, <laughs> my God, I love this, thank you. Well, <clears throat> well, Richard, since you came in late, here's to you, sir. Here's to you. Cheers to that. I wonder, uh, mm. Cass Graphics sent in a super chat and said, donation to help you get Ikea shelves to display yes! your hot toys. That's the problem. Okay. He, he has glass shelves for his hot toys, but he doesn't like them, which I think they're perfectly fine. Look, you got to see him. What I, here, Here's what I want to do. I, I appreciate it. <clears throat> by the way, thank you for that. Yes, thank you. I do want to get, like, Billy... I have probably... You know, if you look at... If you go to... There's a lot of people on the web that have hot toys more than I do. But I have a lot of older hot toys that people don't have, like... Like, if you, one of the things, if you watch Gary Beekler, Nerdrotic, look in his background. You know what Gary Beekler has that a lot of people probably, a lot of people probably don't um, know how deep Gary Beekler's action figure collection goes. But Gary Beekler has a Hot Toys Jarrell, a Marlon Brando as Jarrell. Now, where they, is Hot Toys? Because all I see are. No, nope, no, nope. you gotta look. I mean, people, people don't know. Gary Beekler's collection, Nerdrotic's collection, goes deep, 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 mm -hmm. and you gotta love what he's got. He's got a Hot Toys Jarrell. They only released a Marlon Brando as Jarrell with Superman Returns, and it was not released in the United States. And you know how much Gary paid for that figure? Well, how would you know? Because I asked him. Oh. I asked Gary Beekler. I said, Gary, you have a Hot Toys Jarrell figure. I can see it behind you. He told me he paid six hundred dollars for it. I did not because I got it when it first came out because I worked on Superman Returns. So you have it. Yeah, it's in the it's in the glass case. Oh, in the... right, the case that I keep trying to get you to get in. Yeah, I mean he's he's displayed with his arms behind his back. It's awesome. So, oh, um, uh, uh, <laughs> Alexander Wilson. Hello, Alexander Wilson. How are you, sir? Uh, it's past my bedtime. Shout out from the East Coast. Alexander Wilson is a longtime supporter of the Post Geek Singularity. Yeah. He's a member of the, and a supporter of the Bird Network. And I have to say that Alexander Wilson has been here since I started this channel, pretty much. Alexander Wilson is a very thoughtful, uh, a very soulful, and he always asks, he, he, everything he sends in when he asks questions is very, uh, it's very compelling. And I, yeah. I, I want to thank you, Alexander, for being We're here for this new East show. Coast. Uh, yeah, where on the East Coast are you, sir? I don't know. I grew up in Cleveland. I know that's not exactly the East Coast, Wait. but... <laughs> where are you on the East Coast? I grew up in <laughs> Cleveland. Cleveland. How much wine have you like, had? It's like closer to the East Coast than it is to here. Yeah, but it's not the East Coast. You're like, oh, he oh, says... Oh, uh, but then uh, I lived in Philadelphia. Okay, okay, Philly. My okay. uncle used to be editor of the Philadelphia My Inquirer. youngest daughter was born in Philly. Sophie was born in Philadelphia. Uh, Adam Jimenez, or is it Jimenez? Sends in a super chat and says, "All I ever wanted, for Network After Dark, is all I ever wanted." You know what? <laughs> yes. I used to do Ripped with Rob, but you made me stop. I didn't make you stop. You chose to stop. No, but you expressed you didn't like. Well, I just didn't want you to do it too often because it's really hard on the body. Like, being are you drunk having fun all the time? I'm having a lot of fun. Are you having fun? So if we did this three nights a week. <laughs> People seem to like it. People seem to like it. Yeah, Darth good. Poncho sends in a tip and said, Hey, Rob, how can I believe anything you say now? Laugh out loud. I think I'm pretty upfront <laughs> about what goes on in this show. Uh-oh, did I say something to make people I, doubt I don't know. You? Should they doubt me? Did I say you something? you got to tell them about the veracity of what I say. Don't you think that people oh, should believe? Oh, yeah. No, Rob is very knowledgeable, and whatever he says is probably right. Well, not necessarily. It doesn't have to be right. <laughs> But at least, at least I do try and I speak the truth. I don't, I don't bamboozle people. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm not here to bamboozle or, I, you know, when I say things that I've done, I've actually done them. I mean, I'm not right. Oh yeah, you don't lie about what you've done. No, for sure. And I try and give everybody else credit. And your depth of knowledge is pretty deep. So. My depth of knowledge, depth of is, knowledge pretty is pretty deep. Pretty deep. Oh, yeah. Alexander Wilson is in D.C., which is way better than Philly. Do you know what they have in D.C.? <laughs> I 
I love DC, by the way. I do too. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, I was not, um, Philly was not my favorite place to live, but, but if I'd lived actually in the city, I probably would have loved it more. Uh, I kind of lived in the suburbs. So. Okay. This, this is distressing. Just plain Steve sends in a super chat and says, I just got charged the first of four payments. See, Elizabeth has, mm -hmm. doesn't understand the payments for the Hot Toys. I just got charged the first of four payments from our Hot Toys Endgame cap. What is your next incoming Hot Toy? Well, I yeah. What is your next I incoming pre Hot Toy? I, okay, I pre-ordered. Talk about that. I pre-ordered the Endgame cap, uh, <laughs> uh, but I haven't been charged for it as far as I know. But I just realized now that you told me, I don't think I put cap on payment plan, which means I don't know. Uh, Which means my, you lost some money. No, 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 no! I haven't lost money. My <laughs> my end game. The the next incoming hot toy that I have that I've been paying off slowly but surely. To be honest, the only one that I've been paying off, the only one left, is the quarter scale Darth Vader. Hmm. That's it. The quarter scale Darth Vader. That's it. Uh, that's the only one I have on that I've been paying off. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, Cast Graphics sent in a super chat and said, I live in the International District in Seattle. Uh, I'm originally from Philly. Downtown Seattle is a ghost town. I'm still going to the cinema tonight. Well, Cast Graphics, as you might know, I am from Seattle. I grew up on Mercer Island. And uh, every December 25th, we celebrated Jewish Movie Day. And we went to the International District and had Chinese food after seeing <clears throat> movies. And I would say some of the movies that I was able to see... Did I say Jewish movie day? You did. Okay. December 25th <laughs> is Jewish movie day. And th there were two times in my life where Jewish movie day coincided. Yentl, which I refused to go see. My parents, I was overrided. I saw Yentl. In Normally the I would pick the movies. Yentl, I was like, no way. I'm going <laughs> skiing. I went to Crystal Mountain and I went skiing on, on Christmas. I did not go. It was the only Jewish movie day I missed. And then the other Jewish movie day that we had that was amazing was in 93 jewish movie day 1993 schindler's list mm -hmm. uh every jew in seattle was there and i have to say that if you go to the temple d Hirsch sinai in seattle the schoenfeld gardner foundation is the synagogue that my grandfather's foundation built very cool um darth poncho says because you said she speaks french i was just kidding around oh love the show oh yeah, he's saying that that oh that do you really would you just say something in French? Like, Thirty thousand subscribers. No, anything. Oh, see, oh man, oh come on, man. I will speak uh, French. Hapkido Locke, who's here, sends in a tip and says, "Cheers, you two, great couple, and I love the premise." Oh. So people are loving your show. Okay. So are you are you gonna do more this of these? Good. Yeah. If you guys like it, then we're gonna do more. Mm. Look who is here, by the way. <laughs> Victory Unlimited Show. Victory Unlimited Show is here. For those of you who don't know, maybe this is your first time watching anything I've ever done. Victory Unlimited Show is somebody that has supported this channel, and I love the Victory Unlimited Show. And whenever I see that, I think I should be talking like I'm in a newsletter or a newsreel <laughs> from World War II. Like, news on the march. Victory Unlimited Show is here and sends in a super chat and says, Looks like even the internet is better with wine. Yes. Who knew... Have a glass on me. Carry on, laugh out loud. Oh, thank well, you. Victory, if you just got here, <laughs> we've been drinking Bewitched. So this good. This fine drop, uh, $25 off. We're not going to do that all the time. No, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. <laughs> well, Victory Unlimited Show sent it. Yes, thank you. That, which is good. Mm. So, when you back, back to the premise of the show, I don't feel like we've, we've, <clears throat> we've wrapped it up. We were going to end this show, but you guys are keeping us here, which is good. Okay. What, uh,. <laughs> Mukbang reviews. Uh, thanks for going overtime. Speak French if you watches the sound of music. Well, she'll speak French to me. I hear it all the time. I yeah. mean, and by the way, yeah, um, I'll uh, speak to French to him even if he doesn't understand. I love her mom, Josiane. She's delightful. She's a beautiful woman. And normally she speaks English, but like there, there sometimes they'll just like jump into French, and I, I just think to myself, I'm like. I'm kind of in trouble, or yeah. I'm kind of something. Yeah, sometimes it's Some, about you. Yeah, sometimes it's about me. Like, like tell me about that. Like, <laughs> like, and you guys do it like right in front of me. They'll be like, "Well, let me just tell you what's going on." We had this trip, and then oh, bonjour, blah, blah, blah. and then I'm like, 
<laughs> right, wow, right in mid sentence, right in front of me. Like, there's no. Yep. Like, and and like how how like when you talk to your mom like that, what do you say? Well, it depends. Like what? Like, give me an example no, of. No, when normally it's not about you. Like she when when switches, your mom when your mom jumps into French, French. Like what? What's what's? Your, do you guys have French sayings? Like, what would you say to your mom in French? No, I I won't reveal that until thirty thousand subscribers. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my the god! Mm. Slap swack. a like. Wait, swack props. Oh my god! Okay, <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Can you can you hand me? Mm. See the book that's right oh, there. Oh yeah. Okay, grab that. Just. I don't want to knock the microphone. No, no, it's fine. We'll bring the microphone up. Okay, so my boy, my boy Cal in Indonesia. Swack props on the oh, Etsy sorry, store. Gilbert. Um. So, swack as props. It's, it's just gotten a little dusty. Well, let me dust this off because I've been <laughs> moving things around. Um, so, my boy swack, tr- swack props, Cal. So, I have a fanatical attachment to the movie The Ninth Gate. Roman Polanski's The Ninth Gate. And I, I don't know why. I just do. Now, I mean, you watch The Ninth Gate. Yeah, we watched it together. So, Cal, this guy, swack props, Cal from Indonesia... He has an Etsy store, and um, uh, he makes prop books. Now, he has sent me... I started talking about his work. I couldn't believe it. He makes the uh, a beautiful reproduction of the Kingdom of the Nine Gates from the Ninth Gate, which I thought was... It was insane that anybody even made that. And then... One of my favorite things in the world is Watchmen. And and Cal, Swack Props, who's sending me a tip. Love the new show. You guys are just adorable. Finally, a show I can watch live during the day where I'm at. He made Rorschach's journal. Now, I got to tell you, he makes the Grail, Henry Jones Grail Diary from Last Crusade. If you open this up, now... These books are amazing. These As an books, artist, I can tell you, like, these I mean, if you want to give somebody an un, unusual gift, <clears throat> I mean, he makes... You can't really see... I mean, these things feel real. But if you look in them, I mean, he he, he has all the information. I mean, these, these are so unbelievable. I mean, he's got pictures. He goes through... They are, they are, they are like the coolest things ever. And he makes a bunch of different ones, and they're so beautifully made and so painstakingly put together. That's who Swack Props is, and I, I keep his I keep his prop books. <laughs> you know how much I love them. They're they're amazing, and the leather covers like they're just wow. I mean, it's it's Rorschach's journal, and what he did was he made a combination of Rorschach's journal from the movies and the comic book, and it's just. Uh, it's just brilliant. It's just, it's amazing. But what what's even more amazing is that a person, a human being, thought about doing this <laughs> yeah. and makes mm. them. So go to his go to Swack Props, and I guess Swack is the South Island. Oh, it's Malaysia. Was I did I say Indonesia? It's Malaysia, right? Am I getting it wrong? Cal, am I? I'm getting it wrong. I, I think it's Malaysia. <laughs> it's 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 the, Swack is South, right? So it's the South Island. But I mean. It's it's unbelievable. You've you've got he even included like a pencil and the rubber bands. It's it's just anyway. I talk about him all the time. Oops, I dropped it again. I dropped it. Sorry. On Gilbert. I did. Uh, not the book, no, but it's the, amazing. The uh, Garen Gillum sent in a super chat. I've been here from the very beginning, but Rob has never called me a long time imagination connoisseur. Elizabeth, help me out here. Laugh out loud. Well. Oh. Garen Gillum is a longtime imagination. <laughs> there you Look, go. first of all, okay. <clears throat> if anybody is new here, um, we, the Burnett Work, we have the best community on YouTube. The best. The best. And I, look, I say that, and I know a lot of people have a good community, but we really do have the best. When I say we have the, the imagination connoisseurs, <laughs> And Garen has been around for a long time. I mean, I have moderators now that we're watching. I met Detective Jim Boyers. Uh, he was uh, a watcher of the channel. Mm-hmm. And he sent me a letter that was very touching. And it was amazing. And he, now he's a moderator. But I've never met Detective Jim. 
but I feel a, a kinship to him. But if hopefully he'll get now that we have another chance to go to England to go see Die Another Day, perhaps he will get his passport. But I really believe this community is great, and I wanted you know I wanted to expand it. I think Elizabeth's show, Elizabeth views. <laughs> so why don't you talk? I mean, rather than let me talk, what do you think of? I mean, Elizabeth, talk about buying me this microphone. Oh, yeah. So Rob has been on the Internet for quite a long time, and um, several of us have been telling him to have his own show. So finally, last year at Christmas, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy you a microphone. And that's all re you really need to, like, start your own show. Because, like, he has so much knowledge. And... Well, you need a cam cameras. Okay, but that's part of your computer, at least the initial camera. And you have cameras from... Of yeah. cameras, but look at that. Hey, look up there. Hey, Hi. look at that widescreen. We're like, well. <laughs> yeah. So I got on the microphone, and then he just took off and did his show, and here we are. 300 and how many? Today, episodes? today was episode 360 of Rob's Observations. There you go. And um, so, Garen, yes, Garen is an old time, old school imagination connoisseur, as much as somebody can be an old school imagination connoisseur after what, 15 months? <laughs> so um yeah so 15 months yeah which like you is only, you almost have a whole year full of episodes almost a whole year yeah, 15 months isn't a year well no, oh I oh mean, i see what you're saying number wise like number wise yeah and, what are five you, more days 300 yeah. today was 360 five more, five more and it'll be um 365 the circle is now complete yeah well that's that's uh that's that's amazing that's, that's and of course of by the way our moderator here, Lewis Yu, was also, I see Lewis is here. Lewis was, I've never met Lewis, even though I told him where to park to go see the floats for oh. the, yeah. He, we, oh, is he local? He's local and he's asked to come there. We should, we should, oh, you know, one yeah. day, one day Lewis, by the way, Lewis should come here to the Observatory and yeah, moderate live. Totally. And I'll, I'll put so the camera, cool. Lewis, I'll put the camera yeah, on you. Totally. I'll just, I'll turn it around. I'll be like, yeah. moderator cam. And yeah. I'll just, you know, because we can, we can do that. Yeah. So. That would be really cool. Yeah. Lewis should just come in and do it. <laughs> I didn't know he was local. He is local. That's and he really went to, cool. he went, he brought his family to look at uh, uh, the, the, floats. The, the floats. Yeah. Every year we're so close to the parade and we never actually go. We never go. Mm. Sorry. Richard Ganther sent in a super chat and said, just wanted to reciprocate the cheers. Here's <laughs> to you and Elizabeth. Put this towards some wine, some beer, or some cookies for Gilbert and Tallulah. Yes. What is it? Je suis? <laughs> yes. Je suis le post geek. Say, say that. Oh, you can't say no, it. No, 30. Let me try it. How about, covers. how's my accent? Uh, 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 je suis la, je suis le post geek singularity. Is that okay? Mm. What do I have to do? <laughs> je, how is it? Je suis, je suis, je suis le. Yeah, that's good. Je suis le. Yeah. Je suis le post geek singularity. <laughs> so that was good. Yeah, that'll be okay. Look, Louis, you mm. says let's do lunch. Let's do lunch one day. Yeah, totally. Well, yeah, it's, it's, we can. So, so ultimately, now you're a little bit looser. You're a little bit. I know you're a little. <laughs> well, are you? Totally. Do you feel better now? Yeah. Are you enjoying yourself now? It's it is Friday night. Um, I have been working. You know, I've been in here all night cutting uh, the the the. Uh, what have I been doing? Tell people what I've been doing. Oh, okay. So um, making documentaries for um, the Hills Run Red. And what is the Hills Run Red? The Hills Run Red is a horror film that you produced uh, about twelve. Twelve. Yes, in two thousand eight. Twelve years ago. Yeah, and it's coming out on Blu-ray with a lot of special features that Rob is working on. Yes. And, so, and, yes. So that's what I've been doing. So I've been in here f a lot. A lot. A lot. Because I don't just broadcast from here. All of my computer stuff is here, yeah. so I do all my editing here. And I, it, it was great. Now, tell tell everybody, since you're here, since we now just are going, <laughs> um, uh, the... Um, where was I broadcasting from for the first year of observations? Out of our laundry room. It was our laundry room. Our laundry room. Yeah, but it's a big laundry room, and actually the washer and dryer are behind doors, so it's really kind of a just a big 
room that we turned into an office for Rob. And kind of. I mean, people would walk through and... Yeah, I mean, it was kind of a um, a room that you have to go through to get to other rooms, so... Yeah. And now I'm in the garage. Yeah, the Which garage. is a two-story s- structure. Two-story structure, two-and-a-half garage, uh, car garage with uh, all the collectibles. Everything's in here. It's all in here. All of it. All of it. And, I, and I've slowly... Ex- it's like an excavation project. Yeah. Half of it's, but it's, it's getting pretty interesting here though. It, and it, it's going to get a lot more. What do you think though? What do you think about how it's looking here? Yeah, I, I love it. I think it's amazing. It's great, right? Yeah. The it's Rob Observatory. It's halfway done, but like there's so many collectibles. Um, I just can't wait for him to put up the hot toys wall. I mean, there's so many hot toys in boxes. It's just frustrating because I'm like, these need to be seen. Uh, I know. Do you have a favorite hot toy? There's no wrong answer. I don't know. There's so many I like. Hmm. I'd have to think about that. There's there's but ones you don't even know there, I have. Why isn't there an Amelie hot toy? Uh, there is not an Amelie hot toy. You know what? That's really interesting. Maybe somebody has made an Amelie Poulon hot uh, figure. I don't know. I mean, yeah. they should. That's a good idea. They should make an Amelie hot toy. It's a good idea. Well, listen, we should probably bring this chat to an end. <laughs> this is supposed to be an hour-long show, you guys. Wait, how long have we been going? Uh, we've been going for a, an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> yes! An hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, somebody says switch the camera. All right, I'll switch the camera. Look at that. What do you think about this technology? Yeah, pretty cool. How about that? You like that better? Um, Rob's wife is named Yelena. This is Elizabeth, his girlfriend. <laughs> That's true. Yes, I, I I did have a wife. I was married. I I, I, I was divorced in two thousand seven. So we've both been married. Yeah. Remember, uh, by the way, we dated. <laughs> we lived in sin because she was married for a long time uh, before she was divorced. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, should I not broach that subject? Well. Well. Sometimes these things take a long time. By the time. way, Richard Ganther says, I, I realize my French was not grammatically correct. Apologies. <laughs> but hey, I got some one to attempt to speak French on the episode. Dude, I directed, subscribers. I directed five episodes of a show called Femme Fatales. That was grammatically incorrect. I worked on a show where the actual title was wrong. It should have been Femmes Fatale, right? Yes. Femmes Fatale. But instead, no, it was called Femme Fatales. <laughs> and I directed five episodes of a show. Oh, Francais. Vous estes très belle, mama, girls and boys. Oh, that's a... Girls and boys. Uh, he only knew her for a little while, but he had grown accustomed to... Girl... Well, anyway. <laughs> This is an actual, uh, I bought this tambourine at a print show at the Staples Center. My tambourine! Yeah, if you know that. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, yes. He only knew, uh, what is, uh, bonsoir? Bonsoir? Good evening. Good evening, uh, bonsoir. You won't say it, though. Nope. 30,000 subscribers. <laughs> Slap like now, reveal at 30,000. <laughs> I mean, by the way, Davey504 is revealing his childhood at 7 million subs. It's amazing. If you speak French at 30,000 subs, all right, I'll say that. There you go. Uh, the Richard said, I was married in 2007. Hmm. <laughs> um, yes, so anyway, uh, I'm sure Marriage Story was a fun watch. We <laughs> well, did not watch it together. No, I watched it without Rob, yeah. and whew, boy, did that hit home. Yeah, well, you were married for 17 years, right? 17 years. 17 years. Yeah. And it took you five years to get divorced? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Married for 17 years, the divorce took five years. Yeah, it did. Wow. That's half a decade. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> well, anyway. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you think we should end this chat? I think we should probably end this chat. We don't want to overstay our welcome. <laughs> I think this has become more interesting as it's gone along. I want to thank, first of all, I want to thank everybody. <laughs> Paul Gilmore says, I thought Rob was your hot toy. Oh, yes. You know, I am fully <laughs> articulated. <laughs> anyway, um, I, we're going to end this uh, chat. We're going to end the first episode of 
<laughs> whining about movies. <laughs> Elizaviews. Rob Observations teamed up with Elizaviews. How do you feel about how do you why don't you tell everybody what do you what is this your show? You've been on the show once before, San Diego. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. How Elizaviews are you are you are you down with this? Are you gonna do more? Yeah, this is super fun. Super fun. Super fun. And uh, you guys will have to tell us whether we should do this more. What yeah, you, let us know. Let us know. I mean, all those things. All right, I'm going to bring this chat to an end, this show. The first episode, this is actually the pilot episode <laughs> of uh, Whining About Movies. And remember, I just want to uh, end our... Uh, we got to say that, remember, this episode was about... David Cronenberg's sixth feature film, 1983's Videodrome. This is the Criterion Blu-ray. I highly recommend it. And we drank this bottle of bewitched wine from the Russian River Valley. Yep. I want to give a, a, a I want to explain, they, we were not paid to do this. Mm -hmm. We made this up on the spot. I showed Elizabeth this movie last night after I thought about it for about 27 seconds. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, ooh, let's watch this. So this was not something that anybody paid us for. This is not an advertisement in any way, shape, or form. This was just something we wanted to talk about tonight. And hopefully, if you guys like these shows and we, we get uh, a, a good response, we will be doing these on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights at 8 p.m. Yep. And Looks our, like you have one more Super Chat. There is a Super Chat. I have not. Um <laughs> Garen Gillum says, thanks for that, Rob. Now I can build that Kubrick class USS Burnett for you. Joking. I was gonna do it anyway. Well, thank you, Garen. I really appreciate that. Um, so as always, I would like to say, first of all, thank you to the Burnett Work moderating staff, the Honorable Mayor Mike Bodden, uh, of course, um uh Detective Jim Boyers, Greg Smith. Lewis Yu, who's been here tonight. Thank you, Lewis. And, of course, Jordy Lyons, who was also here earlier. I want to thank everybody that supports the channel. Please, if you like this, hit like, hit subscribe. Please comment. And, you know, you know what? I, I just want to be clear. I am not going to take any suggestions of movies I should show Elizabeth <laughs> because she'll figure it out. So if you put, like, you should show Elizabeth this movie, then she'll know. The yeah, whole point true. is... I want her to see movies that she's never seen before. And it also helps me dive into my, I have to think, like, what do you guys like? And um, uh, that's how I want to do it. And I want to give a shout out to The Richard, who is our moderator on the Post Geek Singularity Facebook page. All of you should run over there if you haven't already. Uh, I really like the, I, I, I participate in the Post Geek Singularity Facebook page, but I don't I'm not the administrator. They, the Richard does a great job. There's a lot of great conversations going. I love what people post. So if you go to Facebook, the Post Geek Singularity, and Elizabeth, where can people find you on social media? Okay, so my Instagram is egbell, B-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Mm. Uh, Facebook, I'm Elizabeth Bell, B-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Um... Twitter, and Twitter is, uh, what is it? Elizabeth Bell. Elizabeth Bell. Spelled E-L-Y-S-A-B-E-T-H. E-E-L-L-E. All right. And uh, for me, you can follow me on Instagram at Robert Meyer Burnett, or you can find me on Twitter at Burnett RM, or you can obviously find me here on YouTube. And um, you can always send letters. By the way, uh, I was told by Mike Bodden today, that there are about 30 letters that had been, there was a snafu about, so there are 30 letters I'm behind on that I'm probably going to try and get through all tomorrow on Rob's observations. So if you sent me a letter recently and I haven't read it, that was the reason why. And um, I'll be back tomorrow at noon. We've got a little new configuration uh, for the Rob Observatory here, which I really like. And, of course, I really do like uh, the wide frame. Things are changing, and we will get the Hot Toys wall, won't we? Better. I know, right? Everybody wants to see the Hot Toys wall, yeah, and they will. Yeah, I think people need to see the Hot Toys They toys need to wall. see the Hot Toys wall. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank everybody for supporting the channel. I want to thank everybody for their kind words and generous support on Twitter, on Facebook, on all kinds of social media. And I hope you all like this first episode of, <laughs> well, 
you know, we're whining. We're whining. We're whining about we're movies. Whining. And we're going to continue to whine about movies. And uh, now that Elizabeth is a little bit looser now, loosened up, a little, uh, you know, it was good, right? You, li- you drank your great. courage. It's better now. Totally. Whining about movies. <laughs> uh, Eliza Views. Rob's observations and Eliza Views. I want to thank you all for being here. And uh, I want to say that, remember, every person you meet, what do they have? They have a story to tell. That what? That you have to hear. <laughs> right. All you have to do is listen. Is listen. And hopefully, uh, Eliza Views will bring you even more stories if I can get mm. her to talk, speak French. 30,000 subscribers. 30,000 subscribers, she'll speak French. <laughs> uh, you know, what? What is that? I listen to it all the time, and I don't even know what it means. But I want to thank you all for being here. And uh, as always, I will just tell you uh, to have a better day. See you tomorrow.